Hey everyone, it's Brett Hornby here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, and take a look, it's now September, that's what the Board of Color calendar says, the first weekend of September, which means it's Labor Day, yes, finally, it is Labor Day for week 13 of the 2022 CFL regular season, so let's bring on the Liberty Classic with the Calgary Stampeders and the Edmonton Elks. This will be on Monday, September the 5th, 2 p.m. kickoff at McMahon Stadium. And I always look forward to this game for the regular season. It's the biggest regular season game of the regular season. It has that playoff atmosphere. Right now, you could say the Calgary Stampeders are in much better shape than the, the Edmonton Elks right now as the Calgary Stampeders. They are third in the West Division right now out of the 6-4 and four record, while the Edmonton Elks are fifth with a 3-8 and eight record. However, you could just throw all that out the window right now with it being Labor Day as it's just a natural rivalry game between the two clubs. I still ranted about the schedule in my last game day post that I think we've had a little too much of it because uh, this is actually the third of four games against the Hampton Elks so far. My Calgary Stampeders have won uh, two of them, and I'm going to say this is definitely an opportunity for the Calgary Stampeders to uh, at least solidify themselves in a better position in the West Division with a winner against the Hampton Elks, of course, I'm looking forward to it. But, once again, you might think this could slowly show a sign of a new era with the Calgary Stampeders, as Jake Mayer will be starting at quarterback for the Calgary Stampeders. Second straight start, yeah, unfortunately, we were on the wrong end of it last week with that 31-29 loss to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in Winnipeg, but... Uh, not too many teams have beaten Winnipeg this year, and I'm recording this fresh off of watching the Labor Day Sunday game, which I always look at that as my warm-up game with the Saskatchewan Roughriders and Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and Winnipeg did find themselves a way to win that game. It was 20-18 over the Saskatchewan Roughriders, so Winnipeg is 11-1, while the Saskatchewan is 6-6, so I can say this game would be big for Calgary to try to so let them survive themselves to at least be in the top three in the West Division. It's still looking like crossover is likely. I would rather have Calgary stay in the West given history, but uh, I still like Calgary's chances to uh, getting back into the win column in this one given how we matched up against the Edmonton Elks. I mean, last time we played them was that 49-6 to win on the road. It was a close one in Calgary the first matchup. I think it was 23-17 to 17, if I recall. However, Edmonton still Nick Arbogo, which now they traded into Ottawa. Edmonton has sold on Taylor Cornelius as quarterback, and I say Calgary has got Jake Mayer now in a second straight start, and looking like he might be the new starting quarterback, but with the gap between the games, Calgary's gotten a little healthier on the offensive line as Jillian Good-Jones will be back at the right tackle, and Jameer Thurman will be back in the lineup. So I'm looking, liking the uh, getting those players back with the little bit of longer gap between the games. But I just say it's always the uh, the atmosphere, you know, the rivalry of the game, and uh, the Edmonton fans who come in to our house while well, I'll be returning the favor because I will be making another trip to Edmonton for the rematch game, but I definitely always up for it a little more with the atmosphere. Feels like a playoff game, and I say, yes, the records are what they are right now, but you could throw it out the window, and supposedly it's not going to be as hot in the stands, thankfully, because uh, I want to capture all of the uh, pregame festivities, including the Jets, and if it was as hot as it was the last game was out, I don't think my smartphone camera what it held up, but they're saying it's going to be a lot cooler, which would be a perfect day for Labor Day, as long as it's not raining, but that's all I have for my 
Calgary Stampeders candy pose is just say a Labor Day Classic just says itself. It's the Calgary Edmonton Bell of Alberta game. I'm gonna say I'm not too happy with the fact that the Edmonton Oilers beat the Calgary Flames in the 2022 Stanley Cup playoffs, but so far my Calgary Stampeders have made me feel a little better by at least taking care of the Edmonton Elks. But now it's September. Looking forward to, you know, the second half of the regular season. Things could also be changing with the BC Lions because uh, Nathan Rourke, unfortunately, is out with an injury. But they acquired Vernon Adams Jr. So maybe this could be an opportunity for the Calgary Stampeders to maybe close the gap and still potentially host a playoff game in November for the West semifinal. But it's just one game at a time. And right now we got... Back to back against the Empton Elks. As well, now we're in September. We've got Labor Day Classic as well as Calgary Flame season. Right around the corner. I'm actually going to say this is my favorite time of the year as a sports fan as the weather starts cooling down, but the sports starts heating up. And I say this is Labor Day weekend. I apologize that this will be the only video that I posted this weekend. I thought I had more time to. Uh, Make content, but I had a couple errands and appointments, and then I did recently get my fourth booster dose for my COVID shot. I did feel a little tired, but nothing major, but I just took it easy this past long weekend. So it's just going to be this, and then as well as any game day content that I'll have at the game. And also, I'm going to have to say, still trying to, you know, that playing catch up thing, it just seems to keep getting away expectation versus reality, but, uh, Hopefully that's not the case when it comes to Lady Classic. I think, looking back, if I can do the math top of my head, this, well, I mean, I've had season tickets for uh, 25 years, but I think uh, this would be my 26th Labor Day Classic if I come in. I went to a Labor Day Classic every year. My first one was 1995, and nothing will ever top that. That was when Jeff Garcia did spectacular things. But I've only missed three, why well, three Labor Day years. Well, 1996, I didn't have tickets yet. 2001, because I couldn't get out of work. And then 2020, there was just some viral thing going around that uh, was wrecking everything. So it tells you it needs to be something major for me to miss Labor Day. So I think this would be my 26th Labor Day Classic coming in. But uh, yeah, I was going to say, it would always be great to beat Edmonton, but you just never know. You can just throw everything out the window. It's just one game at a time right now. So that's how I feel about Calgary in, so that's why I said close out. So if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey, home of the Flames, Hip and Rough Fix, Stamp Eaters, as well as the Calgary SE, just to make sure you hit like, subscribe, as I mostly do talk Calgary sports on my YouTube channel or recap games and stories or do these game day posts. But I also do a variety of non sports content, personal blogs, attempt to comedy. I also do share my experiences, say, on the road or a sport event. So if that all sounds like the interest to watch, do follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey. You know what you do, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe. Also, my other social links down in the description below. And, of course, I have my second channel in Brett Hornby Shorts, where I exclusively put my short-form content on there. Like, for example, the post game for the game tomorrow in between the Calgary Stampeders and the Elks. So, I appreciate like, subscribe both here on my main channel as well as my second channel. And Calgary's also going to be always wearing their uh, Black Outlaw jerseys, but they have a another version of the outlaw jerseys where it almost looks like the close to the originals that they wore starting in 1994 which is their best one so i do my thumbnail where i use a black background instead of red for the home game in this one so as i want to say go stamps go thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video